Good morning! I'm back! I have just arrived back at Everdeen last night after a truly harrowing experience with the SNCF, the National Train Service here in France. But uh, I, I am back. I made it. <laughs> I made it and I'm here and I'm so happy to be back. I was in Paris and Rouen last week doing some different shows. Now I'm, I'm back here and very, very happy about that. And there are many exciting things happening here this week, and especially today is going to be a very exciting day because firstly, my new sofa is getting delivered this morning. And another exciting thing that is happening here today is that my saintly boyfriend, a prince among men, has uh, potentially found a way for me to get a free dance floor. He works for a certain large opera company that I won't, uh, I won't specifically name here because I don't want him to get busted for this. Uh, but basically he's talked to the, um, the person who is in charge of sets and, uh, and I guess dance floors and potentially there is an old and used out for professional ballet company purposes, but totally fine for my purposes, a uh, dance floor that potentially I will be able to get, which would be amazing because a new dance floor is expensive and we need something to be uh, danceable slash movementable in the attic. Um, I want to turn the attic into a yoga slash dance studio, so we need something up there. So if this works out, it would be a huge, huge, huge money saver and help. So <laughs> fingers crossed for that. Anyway, that brings me to the point of today's video, which is going to be showing you guys the attic, which I have not done yet. So I need to go up and measure the attic to see if this potential dance floor option would work. And while I'm up there, I'm going to show you guys around. And then I'm also going to try to do some gardening today if it doesn't rain. Uh, it looks kind of rainy though, so I don't know if that's gonna happen. My indoor project option, if it does rain, is to finish upholstering the chair that I've been working on. It's gonna be a busy day and a very exciting one, so I'm gonna get dressed and get going. <music> and I am ready to go but I'm procrastinating by snacking but to make progress I do have to go in the attic to measure and the attic is filled with spiders at this point uh, most of them are dead so I guess that's better uh, I have severe arachnophobia and uh, this is gonna be an interesting adventure um, I just need to suck it up and go and stop snacking. I have entered the attic. Well, my head has entered the attic. I do love it up here. It's so pretty. But God, there's so many spiders. I can do this. This is, I'm bigger than the spiders. They should be scared of me. Actually, I'm so scared of them, I'm reckless and unpredictable. So like they, that's probably why they should be scared of me. So a little rundown of what's going on up here. Firstly, we've got the, the trap door, which there is only that wood holding it open and it is extremely heavy. And I don't know if it's even possible to open it if it closes. So if it falls closed right now, that's probably the end of my life. Let's not dwell on that, shall we? So basically I haven't touched anything up here since I bought the house. Um, I think that when my parents come back uh, to be helpers again, I'm just gonna send my dad up with a vacuum and be like, remove all spiders, thanks, bye. <laughs> Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff up here that I'm just scared to touch in case there's a spider on it. Um, basically, we've got some insulation that's probably not usable insulation. It's probably from like 1930 and not something that's up to code anymore. So that's probably just going to have to go. Um, we've got a couple of bed frames and the world's tiniest piano. It's so cute. And there's something, there's something behind it. Again, I'm terrified to touch anything. There might be like an attic explore 
what's in the attic later after there's been a massive spider removal and when I have someone else to touch stuff. Oh, I think that's part of the old banisters of the stairs. Oh, that's very useful. I haven't seen that before. That's part of the banisters going up the stairs. And that's really good to know about because I'm going to take out the old heating unit at the top of the stairs and I might need some replacement banister. There's some wood. There's a bunch of spiders. Don't look at the spiders. Don't look at the spiders. There's some more wood over here and um, a couple of little antique irons. That's about six antique irons that we found so far in here. Some little, it looks like a gardening type bit. Um, we've got some chest as well. There's a cup, there's this big chest, which is locked. I did, I'm gonna foot it. I'm gonna, I thought a spider on my foot really isn't great. Is locked. I did work up my courage at one point and try to turn the key and the key does not turn. So we'll get into that eventually. There are also these trunks. Uh, do I wanna? Do I want to open them? Oh, you guys, I'm going to try to open them. If the spiders get me, this is, this is goodbye. It's been a good run. I knew the spiders would get me eventually. Maybe this is the moment. Okay. Bravery. Bravery. You're a large human. They're little spiders. What's in the trunk? Okay, just some, some old packing paper. And it's closed and back away. All right, next trunk. Oh my God, oh my God, look at all of what. Oh my God, no, no, we're not touching that one. That one is, no, that one's for later. That one's for later. No, 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 no. That one's for later. We're not doing that. I'm a little worried because, oh my God, look up, don't look up. Oh God, don't like it don't like it. But there's a skylight here that does open. There's a little mechanism so it opens. I don't know if you guys can really see right there. There's a lot of bird poo on the outside of the skylight and a little bit on the floor in here. So are the birds coming in somehow? That's going to need to be dealt with in some way. <sighs> Um, there's also a newspaper that I found up here from, let's see if we can find a date, 1980. 10th of December, Wednesday, 1980. So that's been up here for 43 years. Cool. When I first started finding stuff like that in the house, I was like, wow, this is amazing. It's been here for 43 years. And now I've just found so many things from like 1910 or like 1940. There's the car picture in the garage. It's obviously been there since like the 50s. I, I'm just a bit nonplussed. <laughs> but it is really cool when you find things like that. This whole house is like a time capsule. It's amazing. There's another single size bed. Which is going to be very useful if I can clean these up and um, and get them into a nice state because I would like to have a few rooms in the house that are single beds so that people can share if we have a lot of people here. Here's the master plan for this space. We've got a reasonably high ceiling. It's a little bit hard to tell on the video, but it's about two and a half meters, uh, maybe three meters um, between the beams and the floor. So that is enough to do some aerial. So it would be really valuable to have an aerial setup of some sort up here because then we could do things like aerial yoga. Uh, you could do aerial hoop in this space. It wouldn't be high enough to do like dynamics, but you could do some simple things. So it would be really valuable to have a aerial space that is attached to the house and therefore gets kind of naturally heated in the winter. That's something that I'll, I'll focus on in the future. I'll have a professional rigger come in and give me some advice about the best way to do that. But it is a possibility up here. So that's really, really useful. What I want to do is clean it all out, potentially remove this. This is a chimney pipe from the wood burning stove downstairs. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the options are with that. But I want to put down a nice Marley style dance floor. I want to put in some mirrors, like for instance, between these uh, beams here and then put in some overhead lighting so it's a bit more bright. Once we open up, like the windows aren't, uh, oh, oh my 
God, look at that. Ugh! I feel extremely anxious at the moment. <laughs> just just being around the webs. I don't, I have not seen any live spiders. But that's not real. Like, it's still bad. It's still bad. Um, What was I saying? <laughs> Back to the point. Oh, the, the windows aren't letting in a lot of light. So once we open the shutters on some of the windows, like those two, and then clean the other ones, it's going to be much brighter just from daylight up here, but also put in some lighting so it's nice and bright. Might even put some little sofas like over here in the corner so you have a nice place to chill when you're taking a break. Um, Yeah, it's going to be great. One of my own hairs just brushed my wrist and my whole life flashed before my eyes. I think I need to sit down. Um, I'm going to quickly measure and then go downstairs before something incredibly traumatic happens like I see a spider. I've made it back downstairs. I survived for now. It's only 1130 in the morning, but I, I really want to drink after that. So stressful. God, I hate spiders so much. Ugh. Just to, to clarify, the reason I keep saying I'm going to send my dad up there is this is a man that I have seen on multiple occasions pick up a spider in his bare hand and throw it out a window or a door or something. So I know that it won't bother him. So I'm not just exploiting the elderly. <laughs> just pulled up. The sofa is here. Oh, I'm so excited. The delivery man had a machine that climbed the stairs for us, but it was still a very tight fit. The good news is the new sofa is in the living room and it's going to be put right there. The bad news is the old sofa was too wide to fit down the stairs. And for the moment, it has to go in the only other available space, which is the blue bedroom, which is the bedroom that I'm working on. So there's just another massive chunk of furniture in here that I have to work around. I am obsessed with this sofa. I love it so much. I know it is risky to have a light colored sofa, but it's just the right color for this room. And I've got a nice little light colored blanket over here that we're going to add to it to give it a little bit of extra protection. So actually that looks a bit yellow next to the actual color of the sofa. Maybe I need a more cream colored blanket. Yeah, I think that's the way forward. But I love the Chesterfield style like this. And I love the color. This is the one. <laughs> anyway, for right now, I'm going to take a lunch break since it's been such an eventful morning with the great spider battle of 2023. Or maybe I'll stay on the sofa forever because it's so cozy and I love it so much. <laughs> moved on to the applying trim phase. So I've got all of the extra fabric trimmed off the outside of the upholstery and now we're going to hot glue this braided trim that I've got. I watched a lot of videos on YouTube about how to do this and a lot of people said that hot glue was okay. So this goes against like all of my instincts because I make a lot of costumes, I do a lot of sewing for myself and this seems wrong. But I was told this was the best way to do it, and a lot of people are doing it this way, so I'm going to go with it and hope for the best. Well, I have to say that I'm pretty happy with the hot glue. I mean, it seems very strong and sturdy, and it's easy to apply, even one-handed while I hold the camera with my other hand. And I think it's looking great. That bit maybe needs to get pulled out a little, but it's looking really nice. Pretty happy with that. It's looking so nice. I did everything except for the arms. With the nice new trim, it looks gorge. I'm so excited. However, good news, bad news. Good news is it looks great. 
bad news is that this is how much trim I have left to do the two arms. I don't think it's quite going to reach. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to go back to the fabric store uh, and get some more trim, which is unfortunately in Paris. So I am going back to Paris uh, next week quickly and I will run to the fabric store and grab a bit more trim like this. Um, and also I really like this style of braid. So what I might do is pick out um, a, another color of this style to do the upholstery on the bed in the blue bedroom. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Wow, it's hard to see anything in here right now. There is so much furniture in the room that I'm trying to work in the most has the most furniture in it. But what I'm talking about with the bed is this bed frame is upholstered and I like this upholstery. I don't know about the 1970s upholstery on the other side or the flower upholstery on the other end. So each of the four sides have completely different fabrics on them. Oops, I've turned off the light with my shoulder. There we go. Um, each of the four sides have completely different fabrics and I want them to all be one fabric. So I got this fabric that's got a beautiful, beautiful texture to it and a nice creamy color, which is one of the theme colors I'm using in this room. And this is going to be the big upholstery project. The chair was my learning project and it was to learn how to upholster so that I can tackle this one. So what I might do is get some more of this braid to go with this fabric and mix textures. I think that'll be really pretty. Maybe in a slightly lighter color, maybe in like a eggshell white. I'm having to sit down in my lovely, I'm gonna call it finished chair. It's not quite finished of course, because the arms do need to be finished, but I'm gonna count this one as a win. I'm super pleased with it. I think it went great as a first upholstery project. I'm pretty proud of myself. And I have enough of this beautiful um, Chanel inspired fabric to do some cushions. So I might do a nice little, a nice little cushion to go with the chair. Anyway, I think I'm going to make myself some dinner and maybe I'll try to do a little bit more painting on the mural wallpaper that I'm working on um, while I watch a series or something. So get a little bit done on that. Anyway, that's where I'm going to leave this video, I think. Um, if you haven't already done so, please do take a minute to subscribe to my channel. It really, really helps me out. It supports uh, bringing you more and more videos like this one. Also, when you subscribe and like my videos, it helps me towards YouTube monetization, which would be a massive help uh, getting things done around here. Uh, there are a lot of expensive projects coming up. And subscribe me will also help you stay tuned and stay up to date with all of the big changes that are happening around here. So please do subscribe and like my videos. I really, really, really deeply appreciate it when you guys do that. So that is, I think, time for me to go get a glass of wine and chill. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go do that. Bye-bye. <laughs>